video for lesson 19 on my website, greater than and less than. We often need to know which of two numbers is the larger and which of two is the smaller. We can use a number line to help us figure that out. The way it works is that on a number line, a number that's to the right will always be larger than a number that's on the left of the two numbers that were being compared. Let's take a look at a simple example to start with. For this example, I want to know if 3 is greater than 1. Now, of course, we know that it is, but the way we can figure that out on a number line is seeing that 3 is to the right of 1. Using symbols, we can write that like this. And we would read that as 3 is greater than 1. In a moment, we'll get back to this symbol and we'll talk more about that. Let's take a look at another example. I want to know if negative 2 is greater than 4. So we're going to find those numbers on the number line. Here's negative 2, and here's 4. And of course, when I say 4, I mean positive 4. We can see that negative 2 is on the left of 4. So that shows that negative 2 is less than 4, just because it's to the left. So we can write negative 2 is less than 4. And again, in a moment, we'll get back to talking about that symbol. Now, for this next example, I'd like to know if negative 5 is larger or smaller than negative 3. Let's take a look at our number line. Negative 5 is on the left of negative 3. Or we can say that negative 3 is to the right of negative 5. That shows us that negative 5 is less than negative 3. Now be careful with that. A lot of students get confused and just say, well, I know that 5 is greater than 3, so it must be that negative 5 is greater than negative 3. And that's not how it works. You have to be careful because if you notice on a number line, the negative side is really the mirror image of the positive side. So everything is kind of backwards in a sense. And that shows us that negative 5 is less than negative 3, even though positive 5 is greater than positive 3. Make sure you're comfortable with that idea. Let's get back to talking about these symbols. When I was growing up, uh, and I learned about this in school, we were taught to look at this symbol as though it's an alligator's mouth. And the idea is that the mouth opens up to the larger number. And the truth is that's actually a very good way of thinking about it. In this case, since 3 is greater than 1, the alligator's mouth opens that way. Since 4 is greater than 2, or since, I'm sorry, since 4 is greater than negative 2, or since negative 2 is less than 4, we would write it like this. The alligator's mouth is opening to the 4. The same thing here. Negative 5 is less than negative 3. Or reading backwards, we could say negative 3 is greater than negative 5. But the whole point is the symbol always opens to the larger number. So it's very helpful to just think of it like that. Now, it's important to understand that when we work with greater than and less than, place value is very important. Let me show you what I mean. I want to compare these two numbers, 284 and 248. Now, a lot of students think that it actually doesn't matter where we write our numbers, that it's actually the same number. That's not true at all. When we want to see what number is larger than another, we have to compare place value by place value. So we can see that both of these numbers have 2 in the hundreds place. That shows us that we have to keep going. We're still not sure of which is larger. We can see that this number has 8 in the tens place, meaning 8 tens, or 80. This number has 4 in the tens place, or 40. So we don't even have to continue looking any further. We can already see that since this has 8 tens and that has 4 tens, this first number is larger. Since they both started with a 2. They both had 200, so that was a tie. We had to keep going, and we saw that 8 tens beat out 4 tens as far as what was larger. So we can say 284 is greater than 248. This is just a very basic lesson to greater than and less than. Make sure you feel comfortable with all, the, all of these ideas. In upcoming lessons, we'll talk about how to do this using fractions and decimal numbers.